Hello, family. Thank you for coming over to the house tonight. And just kick off your shoes and relax your feet. Party on down to the SKB. We're kicking. Just kick it. Just kick it. Okay, you don't come to another episode where we're going to be asking the question of... Why are you telling my business? Don't be telling my business. Hmm. Why not? Because a can-can and a can-can, a can-can, a can-can, and a wheel. Now we're off to... Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the channel. Yes, Dale Chanel's 40 World, where you get all of your kikis, ha-has, and laughter on. All right, we talk about celebrities over here, and we talk about everyday people if we want to, okay? That's how we do it. And I got my family as co-host, my YouTube family as co-host of the show. All right, but we got any leaks out there acting all kind of amnesia-ish. Okay, like, no, Nene, you can't play the amnesia game. Amnesia game. No, 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 no. We're not fools, honey. And you're not finna play us as fools. Okay? Once liked you at one time, but you kept getting on everyday people out here being in these Atlanta streets and treating them like they damn dirt. Well, all the thing they wanted to do was to come up to you and say, pay homage to you and who you were. Okay, baby? But like I said, no love lost. We switched channels. We switched up on your ass. And now it just is what it is. Because you are not going to make us believe that you have amnesia. And the wife of Shaba Man, okay, is supposed to be handling it with Shaba Man. No, ma'am. No, ma'am. No, ma'am. No, ma'am. No, ma'am. That wouldn't even work in the court of law. Because, see, in, a, in the arena of public opinion, you put yourself out there. Yes, Jaden. You put yourself out there to be a husband stealer. And you remember that phrase, mine, yours, ours. Yeah, do you remember that? Mine, yours, ours. Yeah, you did a little cute video where you had somebody else's husband on the passenger seat strolling along with you or driver's seat. Hell, I can't remember which one it was. And I ain't got time to go back. All right. But no ma'am, no ma'am, no ma'am. No sir, no lord, no god. Are you going to make us feel sorry for you? Make us seem like you were drawn into a situation that you had no idea you were getting yourself into? No ma'am, no sir, no lord. Remember Peter. Peter, Peter, Parker Eater had put y'all together. So you knew all the comments and goings of what this man was about. Who he was and that he was still married but separated. Alright? So you're not going to put this on the public and say i don't know what y'all talking about he is my friend he is my friend he's my friend well like many commentators have already said and i'm just echoing what they said uh no ma'am you said he was your boyfriend you said he was your man y'all were living y'all best life okay out up in these streets these Atlanta streets these los angeles streets these new york streets these paris streets these african streets uh where else did she go Las Vegas streets. Yes, you just been leaving a trail behind you. That sister girl, meaning his uh, separated estranged wife, is going to come for you full force and throttle. Okay, baby? She's going to stay on your neck. And not only person that she's staying on your neck, you got Bryce's uh, girlfriend, baby mama. We don't really know if it's true or not. Some people said it was validated that he was not the uh, dad of her child. But either or, if he's hanging around her, he's being around the child, then it just is what it is. Because I hear in the streets, you don't care too much about him, that he's homeless, that he's strung out. All alleged talk out there, okay? But, you know, we, we beginning to think. We beginning to think is some of that shit true, okay? But yes, Nene, you no, you can't walk, you can't pussy pop, you can't battle, uh, back pedal, okay, like you were riding a bike, that you're going to get away from the situation. No, we're going to hold your feet to the fire. Yes, because you were so adamant about holding Kim Zosia's feet to the fire of messing with a married man. Uh-huh, messing with a married man. You said this, I didn't close your legs to married men. Well, what do you think of you? You got an all, all open wide. Dropping it low, spreading it wide for Mr. Merritt, man. Shaba. Mm-hmm. Scammer, man. Shaba. All right. So, what? You, you tell us what's going on. 
because are you scared you're going to have to go to court or are you going to settle out of court? My best advice to you is to settle out of court. But see, you still got her because she ain't letting that man go. All right? She is not letting her man go. So it's not going to be a situation as me, mine, and ours. No, it's going to be she, you, and him. Meaning she's going to take you to the cleaners for messing with her husband. And she might end up riding off in the sunset with her husband intact. Okay? So, who is the real fool here? Who is the real fool? Yes, we're going to hold you very much so accountable. Because you made Kim Zosette feel like shit. You kept driving her stake through her heart, her brain, her mouth, her work, everything. Okay? So, we're going to have to do the same thing to you, Nene. We're going to have to make you be accountable. We're going to make you understand that you cannot tell us one thing at one way in public and then try to dismounce or dismiss your actions. No, ma'am. That's not how we get down. That's not how 54-year-old grown folks, adults work a situation. All right. But let's go briefly into this um, um, interview she did with this young lady. I think her name is Miguel A. Mentanez, or maybe I don't know what her name is, but it just is what it is. She worked for ET. She's one of their journalists over there breaking commentary out for us on Nene Leaks. Let's give a uh, hear what she had to say. We're touching down on a no, college campus, but no. the first time around, you actually had to drop out. Why is that? I did. Maybe? I dropped out because I was pregnant. Okay. Um, I went to Morris Brown College in Atlanta, Georgia at the AU Center, and um, after a couple of years in, I became a mom. Awesome. Yeah. But so you just kind of had to shelve that and then take yeah. on a different role and a different yeah. duty, which was incredibly rewarding. Um, I always tell everybody having my son, you know, at 21 was probably the best thing that ever happened to me because he changed my life. Yeah. And uh, for the better. Yeah. So it's all good. And that was the college experience right there as well. I mean, yeah. just a life mm -hmm. experience, yeah. you know. But mm -hmm. here you are going back to college. What excited you the most about hitting the books again? Uh, nothing. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't have any excitement about hitting no? the books again. No, because... Just the social aspect? Yes, maybe that. But the thing is, after so long, you just, your mind doesn't, you know, function the same, you know. I'm yeah. like, I'm only counting so far and I'm only reading so much. <laughs> so I wasn't excited about that. But I was excited about jumping back into reality TV because I had been out for a little while. Yeah. So I thought this will be a good way to jump back in and see if I really want to do it again or not. Well, how did it feel jumping back into um, reality TV? It was a little scary because you have to know, joining College Hill, we don't know who's in the house. Yeah. So I was a little afraid about who might be in the house with me. Were you fearful but, that they were going to throw in some Atlanta Housewives into the mix? No, I wasn't fearful of those girls because I can handle them anyway. Yes, you can handle yeah, them. But, <laughs> but I was just afraid of, you know, I never, like, lived with anyone, you yeah. know. And I see all the shows where people are moving into homes together. So I was a little, like, I don't know if I want to do that. You know, I'm a little clean. Some people aren't as clean. So your roommate's complete and total surprise. Yes. Um, what was your reaction when they started walking through the door? Because you were the first housemate to arrive. Yeah. So as they were rolling in, what were you thinking? Um, I was scared. I was the first one there, so I decided to peek around and look in all the rooms before everybody got there. Yeah. And I just kept wondering, like, who is going to walk through the door? So who excited you most when they walked through the door? Um, you know, I was excited to see everyone, to be honest. Everyone? I was, yeah, I was. I was, really, I was. Okay. I honestly, you know, I had a, I, I was very open to the mm -hmm. experience. Once I decided I was going to do it and I got in Houston, I, I just became very open to the idea. Yeah. Like, you know, like, make the best of it. Exactly. Right? So I was thinking to myself, like, you know, I just got to push through. 30 days and make the best of it so whoever walks through the door I'm just going to try to have an open heart and an open mind yeah. and I did and everybody that walked through the door they were great I mean obviously I love seeing Frida come through the uh, door yeah. uh, some of the newer people like Dream Doll and India Love I didn't really know them at all yeah. so this was a great time for me to get to know them and I did and I loved them both uh -huh. and then of course I knew Ray J and Lamar and it was it was a great great experience now one person you don't mention yeah. is Stacy Dash. Now, yes. Stacy Dash is one of the housemates, <laughs> and she's not really vibing with the rest of the roommates and castmates for the right. show. So, mm -hmm. are we going to see lots of drama? Are we going to see lots um, of drama progress 
as the season progresses. You know, I've heard about Stacey Dash, but I'm not one of those people that is like, I like, you know, your face card is what's valid to me. So mm -hmm. I take you for the relationship that we have, not from what anybody else have said, right? Fair. So if, obviously I've heard things, um, I don't know. So when Stacy came through the door, I almost really didn't know it was Stacy Dash. I think somebody's like Stacy Dash. I was like, oh, that is Stacy Dash. <laughs> but um, it's gonna be real interesting. <laughs> Honestly, I worked really hard to have a relationship with Stacy, mm -hmm. like in the house. I, you know, at one point I knocked on her door. I was like, I know you like water. So, you know, I know you like this kind of juice. You know, just let me know if you need anything and I will give it to you. And uh, we were on a team together because, you know, I, I don't really know, you know, I, I don't know how Stacy really is. And if Stacy had gone really left with me, mm -hmm. I would have went really off with her. So I was just like, <laughs> let me just be really nice over yeah. here. Yeah, so I was, was really trying to have a relationship. With and I was impressed. Like, yeah, good I tried. on you, Nene. Good on you. Yeah. What did you ultimately take from this experience of um, Chill? Well, I have to tell you this. Uh, all of my housemates, I, I, we are like family forever. Yeah. Uh, I got I mean, to 30 know days them. being yeah. with somebody on a call. Yeah, we have a right? different, it's just a different experience living with somebody. We really are family yeah. now. And I feel like I can call any of them for anything. I felt really connected to them all. Mm -hmm. um, I What I would take away from the experience is that you just are never too old to learn. And so I learned a lot. That's awesome. What do you hope yeah. viewers will take away from it? Um, the same. Same thing. It's just never, never too seen. old to learn. And, um, you know, also where Stacey Dash is concerned, like, you know, people should really value the friendship that they have with mm -hmm. you, not based off what anyone else has to say. What a cool experience, I would say, from a viewer's perspective. It's neat to yeah. see y'all. And, you know, working on assignments up to the minute and doing presentations. And some yes. of you, like, just embracing the presentation aspects mm -hmm. Some of them just being mortified that they have to do something like yes. this. But this type of reality show or even something, again, like a Real Housewives of Atlanta or something similar to that iteration, um, are you willing to jump back into reality TV? Do you want to? Are you creating something I'm not own? creating anything. Um, I create a lot of things mentally. <laughs> <laughs> Girl! <laughs> but you, you, it's, it's a lot, you know, to just, you know, I've been through a lot. And so it's just a lot to just jump back in. So I'm creative, right? right? So I just create a lot of things in my head, and I just don't know when am I going to actually put them out there. Uh, reality is where I started. I can't say anything bad about it. Um, it built my career. Um, so if the right reality came my way, mm -hmm. I would definitely do something. Yeah. Uh, College Hill was a reality show that came my way, and I thought it was okay, and I took a chance on it, and it worked out. Any plans on going back to school full term? No, no. <laughs> you got your case. If I did go back, honestly, I would study law. Really? I really thought that law was really interesting, and uh, yeah. I would really study law. I was actually intimidated to do the law class. I was like, oh, my God. I was up in the middle of the night trying to read the law book. It yeah. is so thick. It was a lot to read. And I was like, I'm reading for 10 minutes, taking a 30-hour break, and then read another 10 minutes and take 18-hour break. Like, it was crazy. But when I got into her class, it was a judge that was teaching the class. And um, she taught it really well. And I found law to be very interesting. Yeah. Well, I do feel like this is kind of a segue to what you have been living through here recently. Yes. Back in April, you filed a lawsuit mm -hmm. against Andy Cohen, Bravo, NBC, mm -hmm. and experiences that you say that you went through mm -hmm. while filming Real Housewives of Atlanta. You said that they tolerated and encouraged a racist and hostile work environment. You accused Kim Zolciak Berman of using the N-word with having no network repercussions, which then in turn made you suffer PTSD. Uh, support system around me, so I am doing really well. You are? Yes. So, this dipping your toe back into reality TV, 
especially after the experience you had with Housewives, does it make you want to do it again in the future? Uh, once again, you know, you take people for their face card, right? Yeah. So, I mean, everyone isn't the same. And my experience over there may not necessarily be my experience over here. Mm -hmm. So, obviously, I've been in the entertainment industry for a long, long time. Yes. So, I'm very open to other experiences. Okay. Um, I loved a post that you recently put out there on the gram. It was a heartwarming tribute to your late husband, Greg. Mm -hmm. And that was celebrating Father's Day and how Father's yeah. Day just won't be the same without him. How are you doing after the loss? I have highs and lows. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm still grieving. I think that people think because you've moved on that you're not grieving. This person was in my life for 25 years, so uh, I grieve the loss of him where I see things that remind me of him and uh, one person told me that lost her husband. I have a lady that I talked to that lost her husband and she said to me, you know, just always talk about it. If you see it, don't keep anything in. So my circle is really okay with me bringing up Greg or talking about Greg. Um, so many of us know him because he yeah. was around for so long and uh, you can't just forget about somebody like that after 25 years. Mm -hmm. So it's highs and lows mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, grieving is hard. I've never had anybody to die that close to me. That was a really it was a trying time. Well, you have found a great support system in so many of your friends, but also mm -hmm. the gentleman by the name of Yanni, correct? <laughs> so how was that relationship going? Um, you know, it's good. It's different. Yeah. Um, but it's good. Yeah. And he's here with you today. What yeah. do you what do you hope people Look, you live a very public life. You post mm -hmm. things on Instagram. People probably think they know you far better than they ever will. They <laughs> yeah. assume a lot. They believe a lot. And they believe yeah. everything that they read and see. But yeah. what do you want people to know about your relationship with him? Um, nothing. Nothing. <laughs> Not a darn thing. Not a darn thing. Not a darn no, thing. But are you happy right now? Are you in um, love? I'm in a good place. Yeah. I'm in a good place. Uh, we're friends. Uh, I'm in a good place. I don't really... You know, I don't know what people want to know. I guess, you know, if it goes somewhere else, then we'll talk about it. Yeah. Obviously, I'm very public, so I just, you know, I know to talk about it. This is all new to him. He's not in the industry, so yeah. he's private, and I'm the public person. Exactly. So. And because of that, you get... Oh, come on. My phone is buffering. I'm sorry, you guys. My phone is buffering. Don't know why. Don't know why. I tell you, once you try to do stuff and you try to use other stuff to back up your story, it doesn't work out. But basically, Nene is saying, you know, she don't know why she was dragged into this situation. Uh, she don't know why. It's just she don't have any feelings about the situation. She feels that it's Yanni's responsibility to get his wife in check. To, pe to put it very bluntly. That's what she feels. Okay. And I'm like girl. N Yanni's name is not on the uh, lawsuit that she has put you into. Okay. It's not serving upon him. The lawsuit is being served upon you Nene. What part of that equation you don't understand? I know you said you didn't care too much about reading. You didn't like math and all that stuff. But this is real shit, Nene. Real shit going down on you. And you're not handling it well. Because for once, ain't no way in the hell I would have went on E.T. But I'm sure E.T. paid you. Because you're not a part of anybody's show at this time. So they had to pay you for an interview. And maybe you weren't privy to all the questions that they were going to ask you. So you can formulate your opinions on how you're going to answer it. But to me, you should have not said anything. Okay, because you, everything that you do now is in the public eye. And you're being judged publicly from our opinions and our feedback of what we feel you served us throughout the interview. Okay, and put it post, post out there for everybody, the masses to see. And able to make their own generalization on what you said and what you're doing and how you move it out in these streets. Which is very f fuckery, foolishness, fraudulent, fakery type of mentality that you're giving us. We know you don't trust your family. You don't have any friends. You can't stand any co-workers that you are put on a show with. 
And you can't trust no preacher, teacher, or no preacher. And that's the Satanist, okay, in you to be so evil, to try to be in a situation with a man who doesn't seem like he's trying to get a divorce. I mean, three, four years, and he's still trying to get a divorce. No, ma'am. Nobody's believing that shit, Nene. So you need to come off your high horse, and you know for a fact, baby girl. College Hill came to you as a rescue job. And you wasn't going to do anything but take it. Because you ain't got nothing else going on. You're not popping out there in the social media realm. Where you got acting gigs. You got acting jobs. You're here. You're there. Okay. No. Again. Where is your team? You saying you have a good support system. It's five uh, months or five years down the road. You're going to come and say you didn't have a good support system. No one was there for you. This, these, these, uh, okay. This, that, and the third. I can see it coming already. You're going to try to back pedal pussy pop and try to basically say uh, you were in distress. You were going through a lot. Don't want to hear that shit, Nene. Get your stuff together and keep your stuff together with that club. Because that's your very much so means of money making at this time. And treat your staff right. Okay. And maybe good things will come to you. But nothing is going to come to you while you're still messing with that married man. And he got you looking all kinds of crazy out in these streets. Now you want to say, oh, he's my friend. We just friends. No, nah, honey. Y'all lovers. Y'all, uh, what do you call it? Oh, I can't think of a better word. Let's just see it. You're just lovers. She's your fuck partner. And that's where it's going to be and always going to uh, be seen as. And I am feeling so sorry for your youngest son who had to sit here and watch his mama make a complete damn fool out of her out of herself. But he can't do no better. He's uh, leaning on you to keep him employed. All right. He's leaning on you to keep him employed. Because when I was kind of sort of listening to what he said he wanted to do while Greg was still on this plane of existence. The brother wanted to be a comedian. And I'm like, what? I ain't never seen him be funny. Even on his little uh, Instagram account where he goes live here and there. The brother's not funny. So I'm like, no, that's not your calling. Do something else. Now he's a DJ. I'm like, hold up. He's a club owner, a DJ, and a bartender. Go figure. He's he's truly confused. And you making him even more confused by showing and proving on how you're flossing out here in these streets. Messing with a married man. Because it's never going to be subtracted. It's never going to be forgotten about. And we're going to continue to talk about it, Nene. So you, from me to you, as advice, you just need not to speak on the situation until after your lawsuit is completed and done okay because as far as i'm gonna say you need to settle with the woman you need to go on and settle with the woman drop that man uh and, and try to live anew okay because you ain't getting too much out there where people trying to check for you unless you do something crazy out in the streets and then you're back on the blogs and we're promoting your bullshit okay because it is uh a damn shame that you out here looking like a dumbass okay a dumbass and I call bullshit on all your talks about, oh, he's my friend. Now he's your friend. He was your lover. He was your boyfriend. He was your man. But now he's your friend. And who brings their friends to a ET or Entertainment Tonight interview? Who does that? Surely not no one that has all their marbles connected and their wires and their brains are kicking and functioning brutally brilliantly but you need to stop your lying you need to take accountability of what you're doing how you looking out in the streets and don't try to blame other people you're the catalyst you set off the shit now you need to rein it back in and dissolve the shit and that's all i got y'all that's all i got for miss nene leaks and will continue to come on my youtube platform and get her straight in my own way until she straighten up and fly right we don't want no tears. We don't want no excuses. We just want you to be the best person you can be. And you can't be the best person you can be, Nene. If you're still doing fake, fraudulent, foolishness, fuckery out here in these Atlanta streets, girl. Get it together. Get it together. And I'll see y'all next video. Bye-bye.